Hey everyone, uh, Gregor Artero here. It has been a while since I think I've really engaged the camera and, and said hello to the world and shared my perspective or my insights into reality or just my current state of being. But uh, 2013, it's almost up. And this is the, the year where I've had the least amount of videos posted since I started my YouTube channel. There's been many reasons why. It's been, it's been a year of letting go, some of us have said. And uh, letting go of a lot of things I usually held on to and how interesting things are coming back in my life. A simple thing being I got my license back two weeks ago. I haven't had for eight years. And that has been a fundamental aspect in influencing my life. There's a story behind that. And, well, the winter solstice last year, I hitched out to Sedona, and I think I, this is was put on my YouTube, and uh, interesting things basically started to happen from that moment on. And uh, I went to Sedona, I went and spent time with Elizabeth Rauscher, who wrote in The Sims Pants, The Residence Project, down in Phoenix. Um, I had a wonderful time with her. And, it's an interesting thing to start out with her in that I've met a lot of people in my travels and uh, people working in free energy movement and toward uh, raising awareness and consciousness and there's of course a lot of ego afoot including my very own and there's this whole siren returns I've been experiencing lately the thing about Elizabeth Rauscher that intrigued me so much is She's, she's, I think she's at least 70. She worked at Stanford University, PhD in, in physics, and uh, one of the most brilliant people I have ever met. Actually, she is the most brilliant person I have ever met on the Earth plane. And the irony is that she's a female and she's a physicist, and she doesn't compare to any scientist I've ever met. And I was able to talk with her about my own theories and, and Tesla's work and, uh, other fringe concepts and we were just clicking the whole time just clicking and uh, I, was, I was getting light bulbs popping off in her head and the, the day she picked me up we went to Taco Bell and I, I, I gave in and got a bean cheese burrito I think it's the last time I've ever had fast food I mean before that was a while but I was with Elizabeth Rauscher and I wasn't going to judge her and that's sort of the thing where I'm bringing up about judgment is her having her Diet Pepsi and her her uh, beef tacos. It's a little Atlas. Hey, Atlas. And uh, her intelligence was unsurpassed, and her, as well as her compassion and her humor. And she was such an alive human being. And we put all these stereotypes upon people um, in terms of their appearance. And the beauty in her was unsurmounted upon what else I've seen on the earth plane. And so that gives me a reference point. It gives me a reference point for who I want to be, for who I want to embody. Have I seen this in other vegetarians or meditators or yogis? Uh, no, not really. I saw it in a classically trained physicist who is destroying herself with aspartame and, and her diet. But at the same time, her will, her soul, it doesn't, that's not part of the external. It's not part of the reality. It's, it's something else, and it's so powerful. And so where it then led me uh, from her place is I ended up getting a ride share at Ashland, Oregon, and uh, got offered a job working for a, for a research firm, Thrival Tech. And what was interesting was uh, like right after getting the ride to Ashton, like within an hour of getting the confirmation from the Craigslist ride share, that my, my roommate back in Asheville, North Carolina, had packed up all my stuff, moved into her basement, and wrote me a letter, an email, to let me know she had done this and that her son had moved in. And I was officially homeless. And I was very perplexed by it and really never got any closure about that. And I think that's what 2013 has stirred up is 
there's been a lot of things that have been hard to find closure in. And so one with, with my closest friend in Asheville, um, as in, well, no, Tree's my closest friend. I love you, Tree. Good chance you're going to watch this. Actually, Tree delayed Facebook. A lot of my good friends are deleting Facebook, so who knows if they'll, they'll catch this. And, uh, uh, but she was the, my friend I knew before I moved to Asheville. And uh, it left a sore spot. And there's been lots of sore spots with many individuals, which comes down to like disappointment. Disappointment in them and also disappointment in myself. And when I went to Thrival Tech, they offered me a job. It was the second time they offered me a job. I, I went, uh, they had offered me one before when I had come and visited them the first time after visiting the sim on Kauai. And uh, they, there was, basically said there was 10% of, you know, the over unity budget to go to other research and that the rest is pretty much for proprietary research, which I'm not allowed to talk about due to uh, non-disclosure agreements and all that mumbo jumbo, which in my opinion just keeps increasing fear. And there's a lot of fear associated with the free energy movement and personally I'm getting sick and tired of it. Uh, it's destroying it. It's been destroying it for years, um, even though there is a huge surge taking over the past two years. Um, moving forward. And well, one of the things um, that sort of happened is I ended up, alright, I'll take the job. I moved there and I started working and it was really about me having a facility and tool and resource to help move forward my research, my projects, at the same time collaborating with others to help support their projects and maybe find some cohesion on a unified project because that's not really what was happening. Um, because the proprietary technology was not my specialty. And so I pretty much became a bitch and started doing all the electrical work and infrastructure work for the facility. And I started working on a project making high voltage test bench, three phase with a 7.5 kilowatt transformer, which I really would like to purchase from them uh, for the original purchasing price of $400. It's a pretty beautiful transformer. And it's just sitting there, not being used. Uh, but I, I mean, out of oh, over $3 million going through that place, I was allocated uh, less than 1000 um, for my work. And uh, it was miserable. It was absolutely miserable. I, I mean, I'm an electrician now in Boulder, and I'll, I'll get to that. But I wake up, and I don't, I'm not miserable to go to work. I'm really not. Um, I actually enjoy it. Um, even though I would prefer to be doing something else, I do enjoy going to work as an electrician. I would never in really enjoyed going to work at the Rival Tech. I'd wake up in the mornings and be like, I don't want to go. Why am I doing this? And it felt so off-key and not right. And that's why I turned down the job the first time. But I took a sign from the universe that with the roommate happening that this is, this is where I'm supposed to go. And... Uh, the first week I was there, one of the things that this cycle keeps happening in my life is agreements. And what are the agreements between people and, and how, how we work together. And I've had verbal agreement after verbal agreement after verbal agreement after verbal agreement broken on me. And in my opinion, and it's not necessarily true, but in my opinion from my perspective, uh, I haven't broken any of my agreements. I've, I've, I've honestly lived up to them. Uh, and. The only, the only point where my agreement broke down with Thrival Tech was probably the last two weeks of working for them because of the bullshit going on. But I asked the first because there, I needed an agreement. I really need a solid agreement. And I never got that agreement. And I technically got fired over that agreement. I got let go um, for a one to two month leave and, and with the opportunity to come back on after having this sabbatical. And the moment I was told, I said, fuck you, I'm, I'm out of here. I'm, I'm so done with this. And Part of it was because of the uh, moves I was making within the company about the agreement and the proprietary information. And being there was an investment firm above the research firm, they, uh, the owners, the, the, the core, owned uh, the majority. Of, I mean, they owned the company, but they had also all the protection. Well, the inventors really didn't have the protection in place, and it was dangerous. And uh, in some ways, it was really disrespectful. I, I caught them in, in, in several lies and, and 
uh, there was a lot of assumptions going on. And the thing is, it was the same reflections I was seeing everywhere in society. And we had like this powerhouse team of, of, of 14 people working together, brilliant minds, and it was a fucking mess. It was fucking alphas going at each other constantly. And uh, I was really pushed aside from, from participating in, in any collective way, in, in my opinion. My, as in when I put forth an idea one time, I was sure shut down that this isn't a democracy. Uh, and it's like, man, you, we've all, we're all the type who can live on like sustainable communities, and we're all very, everyone's really communal minded, but we're not embodying it. And that's what I've kept seeing with the whole new age metaphysical movement, whatever you want to call it, is the embodiment of what we believe. And I had the shit kicked out of me in, in all honesty. I mean, literally, I, have, I was even assaulted, and that's another story, and uh, this year. And I didn't get the shit kicked out of me, but I've, I've internally had the shit kicked out of me. And it's, it's, it's like my, my faith in humanity has, has dwindled so much. It's dwindled so much. And I've tried so much to inspire this world. You can tell you right now, it's like, I need the inspiration. I'm lacking the inspiration. However, everything's set aside, and all the, you know, pessimism that I'm finally starting to feel on the earth plane, where I know lots of older inventors and people who have been struggling and pushing forward, such as Eric Dollard, can feel that pessimism. Um, and, and putting all aside, there's a part of me that still has this passion, this hope, this faith, and really it's compassion. And I, I've really tried to take the word hate out of my vocabulary and just feel compassion for everything. Because as miserable as things can be and what they're teaching us, I feel. I feel very strongly. And that compassion moves me. I feel compassion for everything. There's not a thing that I don't feel compassion for. And that's, that's a foundation. That is my foundation to move forward with everything. And it, it keeps me chugging. <laughs> and there's many moments that remind me of, of that coreness with inside me. And so uh, one of the things that happened uh, after Lee, right before the shit went down with Thrival Tech, even though it was an ongoing process, uh, I was there from pretty much January, officially employed by them, the end of January, and by uh, June, uh, the end of June, I was gone. And uh, there was, over half of that period, we were working on these new agreements for the company, and I really didn't have an agreement. I had a very slight verbal agreement in the beginning. And uh, uh, pretty much like 25 hours a week, here's a 70, 70 Fifty dollar check every every uh, two weeks. That was that was pretty much the verbal agreement. There wasn't really one whatsoever. And um, so I was constantly trying to get a nice solid agreement where everything felt in balance. Because one thing I learned in Asheville is with the agreements, they kept fucking falling apart. I've had ten plus verbal agreements in the last less than three years, just create horrible situations. And. Uh, we worked for months on, on getting this new agreement and it's still and it was the best word in terms of how it was handled was childish it wasn't taken seriously I watched it not be seriously be be taken seriously and one of the interesting metaphors and if Tanasi sees this then so be it but it is an interesting metaphor nonetheless um, is uh, someone Tanasi I'll say the fucking name sorry I said it um, he was a good guy. Tanasi is a good guy. He really is. I mean, everyone is. I was just not seeing people embody their fullest potential, including my own self. And it was making me miserable because I felt hindered, drastically hindered there. And, but when these agreements were actually being signed, when things were being finalized, um, uh, and I found out the day before I was being let go by Tanasi in, our, in my kitchen because I lived with him, which is, don't ever live with your boss. It's a horrible idea. <coughs> um, he told me with his back turned drunk that this was happening to me. And I was talking to a friend in the kitchen, and he walked out, and we, like, looked at each other. We're like, did I just get fired? I 
think. I'm not exactly sure. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not sure either. And then when the next day, and yeah, it's pretty much what happened. And, uh, well, he got on a plane the next day to the Bahamas after I had been fired, um, when he was the one who had hired me and promised me lots of things. Um, uh, I wouldn't say promised is not the best word. Um, I almost feel like I was coaxed into joining Thrival Tech. And, uh, uh, he got on a plane to the Bahamas, and in the Bahamas, he got into a head-on collision with his soon-to-be wife and uh, mother of his child, um, and they both ended up in the hospital unconscious. They, they survived, thankfully. Um, the thing I was getting pointed point is, is going so far off track. When we go so far off track, the universe creates situations that bring us back onto track. Maybe that's what 2013 it's sending me so far off track to find, help me find my way back onto track. Um, even though part of me has, has been like, Am I, have I ever been on track? And maybe I have, because I feel like the whole thing has been developing my being to be, who would say, a super soldier, whatever you want to put it. Uh, um, how do you embody being someone who's a role model, a leader, or is really just being human? Is, what does it mean to be human? And so I'm trying to be human as best as I possibly can be. <laughs> And, and express my emotions, and that, yes, there's frustration, and there's love, uh, there's, there's a full range of things that I'm embodying and trying to live up to. And what happened uh, a month before I left is I, I met Bruce Perlin, known as the King of Pot. He uh, poured more pot into the West Coast than anyone else in U.S. history, went to jail for nine years, got out, he met his, his, his now ex-wife, Lana, um, who's ex-KGB, uh, was personal guard to, uh, not Poon, but one of the leaders of Russia back then, and, uh, and he started up a legal business, or so I think, um, and uh, he does penny stocks, which my brother says always involves lots of legal things, um, and he's told me not to trust him from the beginning, and uh, I had other people be cautious about Bruce, and he was building a 800-person community out in the desert of northern Arizona, Dolan Springs, um, based off the Anastasia books, Kin's Domains, and he was based out of Vegas, and that was very tragic. That whole experience was really fucking tragic, and there was six weeks out there, and so when I left, I went, took Bruce up on his job offer and went to go work for him. I worked for 250 bucks a week. Um, working my ass off uh, in the fucking desert and I uh, um, it was fucking miserable. It was one of the most miserable points of my life uh, and because the amount of bullshit I, I, uh, I had to deal with and sort of like what happened with both of these jobs is I technically got like politically. Politically is the best word fired. It was a political move and I had so many people wanting to get me fired. I've never had so many people like hate me and, and it was it was ridiculous. It was very political. It involved lots of money. There were millions of dollars at stake in this project. I was getting earned two fifty a week because I was trying to be humble to help the project move forward. And I took a role as as uh, um, site manager out in Dolan Springs because I could see right away that as if I didn't step in this project was gonna fall apart. And um, I got physically assaulted by an ex-CIA agent, and then I got the worst verbal assault of my life by Lana, the ex-KGB agent. And the next day she came to me, after flipping out on me, and crying and saying, I can't believe I was such a bitch to you. I, I just can't believe I was such a bitch yelling at you, because you were such a nice gentleman. I've never yelled at someone like that, and you just stood there and just continued to be polite. And she was shocked and honestly that was like the the nicest thing someone had said to me the entire year in relation to me and how I feel about such a statement like that let's say uh, but I'm a good soldier I'm a really good soldier I'm one of the best soldiers that she has ever met in her entire life and she said I could stay at the Dolan Springs house for the rest of my life if I wanted to and uh, that, when Bruce found out that Lana liked me, that infuriated him and immediately led to my dismissal, even though it was already in the works to dismiss me. And what was dismissing me? Uh, it was me not getting paid that week and bringing me to a bus stop 
with my girlfriend Kate in fucking Las Vegas and leaving me there with our cat. That was that was us getting fired. We had no vehicle. Um, and it was absolute fucking betrayal by him, by my friend uh, Freed Khan. I'll say it, Freed, if you see this. He's been trying to contact me. I've been ignoring him. I've never been so disrespected by a human on this planet. It's something I'm personally trying to work through. And all this I'm talking about is is, is the disappointment. This brings up cycles of Atlantis because this is what I feel with Atlantis. I feel betrayal. I feel dis disappointment. I was working on these big projects and they just keep falling through again and again and again. And uh, I, I, I remember the day, the day, night before I got assaulted, the day before I got assaulted um, by, by this ex-CIA agent, which was really intense when that went down. It was really fucking intense. I ended up even talking to the sheriff about it because this man had been rumored to kill a few people in town, bring them out to the desert and bury them. And so there was a lot, there was a lot of fucked up shit going on in Dolan Springs. Six weeks of my life, that is a chapter in my autobiography and what the fuck went down in Dolan Springs. But I remember telling Kate the day before I got assaulted, I was like, Kate, I have no fucking clue what could happen tomorrow. Anything could happen because every fucking day out here in the desert something crazy as uh, shit happens and it happens every day there is no nothing monotonous about this life here nothing it's funny because we're in the desert but every day something crazy happens and it's just consistent 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 and the next day I, I get fucking assaulted um, and uh, I get checked like a football player I mean like checked <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I had an agreement with Bruce. He fell back on the agreement. Like, he just kept, like, stripping out things from the agreement. Um, one of the things we were supposed to go Burning Man, and I had a low-income ticket reserved, and he was supposed to pay for it and pay for a ticket for Kate. No, he pulled the tickets from us. We didn't go. And he went himself instead. And uh, everything I observed about Bruce Perling, he has a good heart, but he has some serious mental issues going on um, and to where I'd even make the statement which a lot of people agree there's a level of possession going on in him there's a level of possession going on in a lot of humans there's a level of fracturing of personalities maybe due to possession in humans and media influence um, to where like mass schizophrenia is sort of going on uh, people are losing themselves <laughs> and I'm watching it day in and day out I'm doing really good at being me really good and being present and calm and enjoying the moment. And uh, after that, uh, Asha Pacific Domes bailed us out, being she introduced us to Bruce. And in my opinion, she felt really bad for setting us up with Bruce in that situation. Halfway through it, she offered to help us get out of it. She was feeling it was not a good situation for us. And so uh, we went there with Kate's cousin. He completely betrayed us, stole more than several hundred dollars worth from us um, and fucked up like blood well, not blood he was adopted um, uh, sort of no he wasn't adopted but he, he wasn't really related to Kate but still her cousin and complete fucking betrayal I mean I've never there's just there's so much betrayal going on and the betrayal isn't like really backstabbing, it's, it's more like fending for yourself, survival of the fittest, and, and it's like Darwin is the old paradigm, and that's what I'm fucking going up against constantly, it's fucking rough, and uh, people aren't necessarily seeing the big picture, people talk about it, but people aren't embodying it, when I tried to do a Kickstarter a year ago called the Fellowship of Tesla, the idea, which I haven't found really anyone to get like excited as me about it in seeing this, in that if you have the Enneagram, you know, understanding the Enneagram, uh, if you have nine fundamental personalities based off the Enneagram, uh, and in stories such as the Fellowship and the TV series uh, Fellowship of Lord of the Rings and uh, TV series Firefly, uh, even the, 
the other one, The Office, it's a comedy. Uh, I enjoy these all thoroughly because of how well executed they were in terms of character development of nine people. What happens when you get these nine people together? In this reality, will the story just flow? Because right now it all just feels like a story. It just feels like cycles of the same pages are happening again and again, and we got to gain our awareness to step out of it or change it, execute our free will. But the big thing I've been learning this year is learn when to let go and learn when to take control. And there's very, very specific moments in which we need to be decisive in. And it's those decisiveness aspects where it's really pick, you know, choose your own adventure in the book that you really shift the story big time and move out of these cycles. And uh, it's working together to inspire. That's why I've said this whole time, is we need a team. I'm still this lone guy sitting on a couch, and I hear this irony that Gregor's really hard to work with. Gregor is a terminator, and uh, he's very forceful. And I'm actually pretty down to earth and relaxed. And when people see me get passionate and become the so-called terminator, it's because it is those moments that we need to be so unbelievably decisive in because if we are not decisive that cycle continues and it continues and it continues and we, we live in the same misery until we learn that's the big thing people is there are specific moments we need to be decisive in that come from right here so that's what I'm talking about with embodying the compassion and feeling the compassion because when you do in those moments you're going to change something. You're really going to change something. And so sometimes I really fight to break those cycles. And sometimes I don't really know how to do it effectively. And that's why I got to live it again and again. Groundhog's Day, baby. Until we fix it. And it's really not fixing it. It's realizing it. It's implementing it. It's embodying it. And so, what happened, you know, Asha bailed us out, brought us back to Ashland for a couple weeks, and uh, she asked us this fundamental question, where do you want to go? And, well, Boulder. Boulder seemed like the right place to be at the time. And uh, Breakthrough Energy Movement was there. Boulder was the biggest talk of the town in the country next to Asheville. Um, Asheville was always second. Um, but Boulder just kept popping up. And... Uh, Kate and I ended up here on the day of the flood beginning, like uh, September 11th, and we get here and it's just pouring, and it just keeps pouring. We're in our friend's apartment down down for an hour, it starts flooding, and uh, worked for, got a job within a few days working for Ecos, doing disaster cleanup. Frustrating as hell, I can't even tell you how frustrating that job was, uh, mainly because the foreman was a Jehovah's Witness, and the company was run by Jehovah's Witnesses. I was going to say nothing against Jehovah's Witnesses, but you could say I have some friends growing up who've, uh, who are no longer Jehovah's Witnesses, but they have even their own built-up emotions for how that influenced their life, and I know how it influenced them, and because they, it causes me some frustration, but I have compassion for them and what they've experienced. And uh, I did not like working for them at all. And I did enjoy the $16 an hour and the overtime with it. And uh, anyways, um, first day on the job, I met this guy, uh, David Rusky, the electrician, who gets contracted out by them. Works for a company called Positive Energy, which I thought was just really interesting, you know, with Tesla and Positive Energy. And <coughs> even though he didn't really have a correlation between it. You just thought, you know, being you know, positive energy, like how people would use it colloquially. Anyways, he uh, told him my background and that that was sort of my idea with coming to Boulder, was just an electrician job. And I was almost saying, fuck free energy for a moment, because I am tired of a lot of the people I've been working with and the bullshit and the misery it's been bringing to my life. Because that's the challenge of, of coming up against the old paradigm. Tesla dealt with it. A lot of us have dealt with it who have taken that challenge. You can say that's the right path. <coughs> and I, I've stretched my resources so thin to move forward these endeavors that I really haven't taken care of myself. And 
I, I, I wanted to... Uh, I wanted to know what it is to, you know, like, really be human, you know? Or you could say American, just have a nice home, don't worry about the daily, even though money is still a worry on the daily. I mean, that's, the economy will collapse. It's not an if, it's a will, or it's a when, really. And um, it is non-sustainable. And, and so I've just been working this job and enjoying being an electrician and talking to customers and I'm good at it. I like it. And uh, nothing really exciting has happened in Boulder, in my honest opinion. It's sort of been stagnant here. And uh, BEM was awesome. I got this job offer, which has sort, of, sort of been flaky, on uh, Topanga Canyon, California, um, with Russ Grease. And he's definitely much more interested in Russ than me, as I'm, you can say, more of a Buckminster Fuller, Walter Russell type, um, and uh, with the cosmology systems theory aspects, um, and uh, I haven't built a shit ton of stuff, nor have I succeeded really at building anything um, besides, what is it in my pocket, this inert coil, this lovely coil that I used to talk about so much about. And still, I understand them more and more all the time. And uh, I, I've been doing lots and lots of research and studying, um, absorbing as much information as I possibly can and figuring out how to perfect a system. Uh, but Breakthrough Energy Movement was nice. Um, I didn't spend as much time there. It seemed like everyone who got to go there was just like there, but because I lived in Boulder, I, there was just work and other things going on. I got two of the three days off, but not one, and um, I, I've definitely been physically, emotionally, and spiritually drained this year, more than anything, and uh, I've been trying to figure out internally how to change directions with that and, and, and move things forward, uh, but I don't know what's next. I really don't. I'm finishing up. I've been... Uh, working on the lecture from Breakthrough Energy Movement. The video and the audio is really good. Some of you have probably seen it. Um, Russ uploaded the live version of it. Um, uh, but I have the higher quality video and audio and, and adding lots of animation to it. Um, I got hung up on one thing I said in the presentation wasn't necessarily true. And it was a theoretical thing that I had been meditating about like the past few weeks. And then it made me meditate on it a lot the past few weeks sort of halted that video editing to where I'm like got a grasp of how to spin it with animations and, and make sense of it um, and which involved dimensional theory and uh, there's the idea of, of getting an Indiegogo together I feel like I'm at a loss for words and actions I'm just I'm just present I mean, that's sort of like the core of everything with me now, is I'm just present, observing, experiencing reality. I'm not as participating as much as I used to be. Um, and I want to. I really do. And... I don't know. Maybe that's where I sound the beginning. I need the inspiration right now for once. Um, and I'm now on a, a farm, a 37-acre farm. Uh, there's there's a workshop, there's greenhouses. I really don't have money to invest in things. I really don't have my tools here yet, but my friend Tree is bringing them out from Asheville. Um, uh, I still don't really have a, a solid foundation to move forward with any technology. Um, and, I mean, I have my electrician tools right now. That's, that's pretty much it. <laughs> and my grinder. I got my grinder and my two blacksmithing hammers. But no anvil, no torch, no fire. Um, and so I'm, I'm going to be making an induction heater. And uh, the three big things that I have been working on is still a Tesla tower, a working coil system. And one thing I haven't talked about much is, is this plasma computing system. 
uh, ternary computing system that I was working on with Reed Kong, and I felt like he fucked me over out of. That's another story. Um, uh, he's someone who worked with Marco Rodin as well. And uh, that the how you can make a, a transistor vacuum tube entirely out of plasma and how you can create uh, basically an environment that's like a processor, a plasmatic environment, a plasmatic brain that's uh, able to do switching um, at light speed and at the same time uh, being able to fractalize, being able to create a fractal, a, a fractal crystalline computing system. Um, so these are all theoretical things, um, but I, I need the space to really execute them. I need the budget. Um, I'm tired of really half-assing things. I, I, half-assing just sucks. It's just a waste of time. It really is. Um, I'm good at it, though. I am. Definitely am. I know how to be resourceful. And. Uh, but one of the projects we're engaged here is I just made a 3D model of a, a hoe, uh, garden hoe, <laughs> you know, the slutty kind. And uh, uh, based off Schauberger's concept of using copper tools, and uh, we'll get the 3D model printed and then uh, make a mold of it and then cast it with the induction here to make bronze. Um, ideally, it'd be beryllium copper, but it's really expensive, but super fucking strong. And Crane's more of the the uh, copper color and bronze and, and, and then working on a wire filter it's not really what I want to do and so it's the same with sort of thrival tech and, and, and the three other sort of opportunities I've all presented myself they're not really what I want to do they're not really what I'm working on um, and, but this has happened multiple times even in Asheville where it's not necessarily what I want to do and I, I have moments of being of humility and just being accepting it and I'm gonna work on this and it just goes disastrous usually and that there's there's a reason I feel so strongly about this and that I need to move toward this and I, I feel like my fail safe right now is just like South America I just, I just need to go to South America um, my eyes particularly set on southern Chile right now but there's there's sort of like my relapse of, of the past year and the craziness involved. But uh, thank you for listening if anyone's listened up to this point. Uh, that's just my, my download on the situation and the characters I've involved myself in. <laughs> and so uh, I'm completely up for collaboration. Heart collaboration. That's the best way to put it. Not, not the, the ego collaboration I've been seeing. And I'm not calling everyone I've worked with complete ego mongers or ego mongers, period. I'm just, I'm, I'm frustrated by the levels of it manifesting and messing up productivity in situations and situations and friendships. Really friendships. So many friendships. All those people, good people. All of them, good people. Friendships down the drain, <laughs> so many of them, and it's sad. It's really sad. It's disheartening. And so, I'm looking for friendships who want to maintain friendships and respect friendship and respect agreement and uh, have mutual intent. I think that's the big thing with all of this is really getting mutual intent. Everyone has intent all over the place, and we all have our own intent. Like I say, I want to work on my project. He wants to work on his project. Yeah, we have we have our own our own things. Um, ideally, it's where is the mutual collaboration coming in, the mutual intent. And that's the word that stuck out the whole New Age metaphysical movement. More than anything for me is co-creation. How do we co-create together? Simple. Well, I love you all. Thank you for those who have listened up to this point. And I'm open to anything, really. Uh, the place I'm staying at is really cheap. Uh, at the moment, it's working out with this guy Scott and this business venture. I don't think it's gonna work out. Um, uh, I was gonna have a friend will come out from Maine. I, I don't think it's happening now. Uh, and he's gonna possibly try out the farming managing position. And this house is for the farming manager. And so there's no farming manager. We're gonna be moving out. We're probably moving out January 17th. And so. 
figuring out what the hell we're going to do. Um, and probably going to stay in Boulder. Probably going to stay in Boulder. Um, West Coast, Fukushima, not looking so good. And uh, I don't know. I'm not in the right place. You'd say that's one thing I feel. So uh, I want to be in the right place. And, and really what that is is just being surrounded by loving individuals who want to collaborate on daily being and projects. You know, good food like this aloe vera fruit juice. This is excellent. I just made and I got this new juicer that's sort of like the new slow upright juicers and they span like 80 RPMs and so your juice can sit like some of you would be like oh I've got that saying all the enzymes are gone not this type of juicer lasts for a while I'm, I'm very thankful um, having juice back in my life I'm enjoying being a vegetarian and mostly vegan mostly raw but definitely definitely being vegetarian someone just honked the horn out here on the farm, middle of nowhere, and, but yeah, I would just love to wake up to happy people. There you go, that's what I want, I want to wake up to happy people. Ciao everyone, love.